um, that when you're thinking about going to more advanced students, it becomes more about um, either bringing a sense of like community to the group. So if you've got new students or it's a new class, you play some games so that they get to know each other. That's not like musically orientated, although you can do it through music, obviously. And then um, with, yeah, say book two to three groups, it's not so much games, but bringing in their imagery and their characterization of the music. So yeah, reading the workflow can feel like, you know, if you said to a nine-year-old, do you want to read the workflow? They'd probably be like, oh, no, thanks, that's for five-year-olds. But if you say like, everyone knows the workflow, we're going to use it to, to bring in different voices and humorous, and they're suddenly like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense to me. Um, and you know, I think it can be like, what games do I do with my, with my book? Four to six group the other day, we were learning, um, um, what were we doing? We were doing tonalization, double stop tonalization, so um, broken steps. Um, so they all know their tonalization really well, and then we were doing um, broken steps followed by a, a double stop chord. Um, what and broken steps? Like, So in the grade exams, when you first start to do double stop um, scales, they'll play them like, um, what do they do first? Six, seven. So the idea is you do it slow enough that you can hear whether both notes are in tune before you put them together and then you maximise your chance of playing in tune. So double stop uh, tonalisation, I teach in the same way. So we Your left hand going all the time, otherwise you won't know where you're up to when it's your turn. 
Okay? So if I start, ready, go. Do, 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 do. are doing the left hand all the time and that means that they're practicing well what are they practicing who are really good at some of it and then like just stop after three beats or stop after two beats mm -hmm. or can't count and you have to make it easier or harder or whatever. So if you really need to say to them right now we're do three beats or two beats. Some people are like, how long is it going to take me to learn a piece? It's like, well, which piece? And 
So rather than like, well, we expect you, you know, like in school, you expect to learn this many spellings a week, you expect to do this many times tables by this age, um, that kind of thing. Uh, whereas you can't really say that to someone, you know, it takes a month to learn a piece, so therefore by a year you will have finished book one. Like, that's not how it works. Um, <laughs> so I think that the credit system, especially in conjunction with the tick boxes, can be a really helpful way for the students to kind of be able to judge, and the parents to be able to judge how much they've progressed on that particular piece and how close they are to moving on to the next piece. Um, we are trying to work at three levels, particularly once they're into book one, like pre-twinkles is all just a bit of a <laughs> mishmash of all the different things they're learning. But once you've, once you've kind of got, you know, let's say that you've got a student on long, long ago, you're kind of thinking, okay, what's coming up next? So if you've got a student on long, long ago, Joe, what might you be thinking you want to get them ready for? Oh, you've got two. One, sorry. I've got one. Um... I'm going to start getting them ready for. I'm going to do lots of lovely long bows with them at that slow speed and make sure that it's straight bows and accurate so that when they do the fast bows and the leg ones, they can keep the length and it just change the speed. Good. So you're thinking about long bow staccato. Good. Um, you might also be thinking in the long term, Hannah. Um, so let's just review what's new in long, long go. D string, so what might you also be thinking I should also get ready for? Well, the D string at uh, Palace West today. D, D string, D. Yeah, good, so playing more on DNA, but also. If you haven't done it already, D string twinkle. Yeah, but the other thing that is not in Long Long Go, the preview that you want to get ready for. That is not in Long Long Go. So you're thinking ahead, what do they? What are they going to need soon that we haven't got to cover yet, but I can cover exactly in advance to make sure that it's not a big shock for them. G-string and kit, second sort of third section of book one is all about in the left hand. Um, what's the big challenge in the left hand once you've covered all the strings? Is it quick string also? No, no in the left hand, um, in the fingers. so that by the time you get to etudes, they've done loads of low twos and they don't find it so impossible to coordinate high twos and low twos in the same piece with all four strings for the first time, because it's not the first time. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> good, so, and then of course you're doing the review and you're working on their working piece. So I call, of that, I call that the triple layer approach that you're thinking, what's the preview that's gonna come up soon? I need to introduce some tiny little bite-sized pieces so they don't even notice that we're doing it. Just like when you've got kids who are doing open strings, you might start doing this. Or finger one, finger one, where are you? Or you might put spots on their violin shoulders so that when they put their fingers down, they're doing this pattern, even though they're not playing with their fingers yet. All of those kind of things. Um, and they're listening, obviously. That's like the most preview thing that you can do, isn't it? To listen to pieces you don't know how to play yet. Um, and so the preview is the tiny little bits in advance that they're going to need later, sometimes much later. Uh, and then the working pieces, like what they're working on, the new stuff they're working on at the moment. And then review is at least sort of 75% of their practice time and hopefully lesson time. Um, 
is refining those old skills so that the new skills become easier to manage. With the preview, would you make it them credit like do credits for the preview or just the plot for the preview? Uh, credits or or they can just do it sometimes, you know, it depends how much motivation they need. If you've got a kid who's like, oh wow, where to you oh, I can play and that back down again and they're just delighted to do that then you know don't it like give them a credit but if you've got a kid who's like putting their two between one and three and just doesn't care then you need like okay do you want another credit you know i do encourage my parents to give a some sort of prize or experience for credits i think um there's a lot of worry about like uh what is it the that talking about like commercializing that's the wrong word the difference between bribery yeah. and reward yeah, exactly. A bribe is for a corrupt or immoral act. And a reward is, you know, something for doing something well and trying hard. And intrinsically, we want to feel that music is going to be the reward in and of itself. Mm. But when you're playing, you know, grade two pieces, there's not very much musical reward intrinsically in there. So you have to find an extrinsic, i.e. externally, you know, given reward and that's what all of these games are about that's what all of the stickers are about that's what all of the practice charts you know it's all about finding ways to motivate someone to do something that will eventually be its own reward but that's like a 10 year journey so um so i do you know like yesterday little hal was telling me that he gets a pound to spend in the shop when he gets um when he gets a, a credit. credit my daughter has just got 30 pounds for bath double because it's huge it's like five pages of really difficult stuff and she doesn't really yet want to do it and so I'm happy to give her 30 quid because she's done it despite you know finding it really difficult and not really being motivated to do it for itself yet because I'm sure that one day she will be and if she isn't then she's I don't care like I've given her a few hundred quid in credit like whatever you know <laughs> um but I do, I do quite often say to the parents I hope you like your job and they say yes or no and I say I really like my job but I'm not sure how often I would come to work if I didn't get paid. And this is what we have to find for our students. Like, we yeah. hope that they like me. I'm not talking about money, just hear me out. Yeah. I'm not, um, I say, we hope that the kids enjoy music and we hope that they want to do it for itself eventually. But when they don't want to do it for itself, you have to find the equivalent of your pay packet. So that might be getting to go to the shop and choose a pack of crisps. That might be, you know, saving stickers to get a new book or go to the zoo or like that might be just giving stickers during practice and lessons, like whatever it is, you need to find the things that help them take the small steps that get them to the end goal, which they can't see. They can't see a, a goal in 10 years. Yeah. But I thought tick boxes were credits. No, so the credits, so if you, um, so let me go and get my book. Um, could you just read out bottom bit which says tick boxes before that. Once the child is playing I'm a little monkey, there is often the need to draw their attention to more than one thing while they play. So at this point I will start to write the teaching points of the music with the tick box after them. So for I'm a little monkey, I may require the students to think about getting a good tone, getting their fingers on the tapes and keeping their rhythm steady. So I will write tone, intonation and rhythm above the music with a box after each. In the lesson, I will ask them which one they are going to try for a tick on, one point less than me and one point at a time, and they play it for me, thinking about the thing in particular. Once they have all their ticks, they are ready to try it for the credit. Okay, yeah. So the credit is like, I can get from the beginning of the piece to the end of the piece, like mostly correct, you know, right fingers, right bowings, right rhythms, not horribly out of tune with a nice tone, but certainly nowhere near being ready for a performance yet. And that's my sign to my students that they are ready to then start working on the next piece, as in that's their working piece now. Um, as an aside, I find the, the phrase top piece really annoying because your top piece should be the piece that you're best at. And when we say what's your top piece and it means the piece that's furthest on for them, we're reinforcing an idea that it's a race and not that what you're working on is not going to be the thing that you're best at. And your, your top piece may be Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and your working piece may be book seven. Like, you know, it's, um, 
it's a small thing, but I try and use working piece um, rather than a top piece. Um, <clears throat> so, for example, it doesn't matter which book, which level book you've got, but you know, you would have a piece that's got the boxes in, and then on top there'll be a bunch of things that that student has to work on, and they'll be different from each student. Like the ones I've put in my teaching books are the kind of generic ones that you often need, but you may find that, you know, if you've got a child who's working on their bow mold, then you bow mold on every single piece for like a book and a half, and then suddenly you have to, oh, I can stop writing that because I'm now just ticking it each time. Um, but it's a way to make sure that the parents and the children are really clear on what they need to think about while they're playing and, um, and, for, and for you to be able to kind of moderate their expectations about like if you, you know, I've had kids come into a class, into a lesson and say, I'm going to try for my credit today on my new piece and I'm like, I haven't even given you a lesson on it and they're like, yeah, and I'm, so okay, well why don't I give you a lesson I can give you what the boxes are and then you'll know what you've got to work on to get that credit. Whereas if you just kind of like you set a piece and then they come back and play it, mm -hmm. you know, it can feel like it could be anything from one week to ten weeks until they get the credit and they just don't know where they are with it. Would you have a tick box for like a specific bar that they might find challenging? Mostly I have the word boxes, which is for the practice repetition boxes. Okay, so that you call that a box. That's yeah, a box so it would go, it's not in here, but it probably is in book two. So it would just say boxes, and then and then also I use small ticks and big ticks. So if they've got some of the boxes are fine, I would give them a small tick in the boxes box <laughs> and rub out the ones they don't have to do anymore. Mm. And then when they get the big box tick, that means that they've they've tackled all the boxes. And in pre twinkles, I try and give credits for as many different things as I can possibly think of because it really motivates them and I think it also sets up an expectation that they will work towards credits, you know, in a kind of focused way mm -hmm. and then because the twinkles can be so nebulous, mm -hmm. you know, if you've broken it down that my students during their twinkles they will learn their bread with a stop for one, two, three on each rhythm except Dr. Suzuki and then they get a credit for those and during the, that time that they're working on that, probably a term, we're working on um, coming to three independently and then walking down the scale. And so then by the time they put Twinkle all together for the first time, they're doing um, walking fingers. Oh, wow. um, and so they would get a credit for the breads and then they get a credit for the Twinkle variations. And it means that you don't have that like massive stop where suddenly they have to go from like block fingers for one, two, three with a stop to walking fingers. <coughs> um, yeah. Any questions? Okay, cool. Right, why don't we take lunch now? We'll come back at 20 past one. Mm -hmm. And this afternoon we are doing private lessons. Can we do a little bit of play? Sounds good. I yes. feel like I haven't warmed up. For sure. Why don't we lead a piece each? Okay. Well, when I say we, I mean you. <laughs> later. Huh? Later, after lunch? After lunch, I can warm up. Listen. Yeah, after lunch. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, everybody.